Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, we want to now focus our direction on something a little bit more, uh, a little bit different. If you've ever done development in modern day web websites, like anything, if you're using Node.js or uh, really you have these package managers and, and with Node ecosystem, you have the NPM, which stands for Node Package Module or Manager or something like that. And all, what it is, is it's, it's the ability to be able to reach across the web, grab some code, install it to a file somewhere. There's two options that you have essentially anytime you do that. Number one is that if you do just use your package manager, which in Python, the package manager is called pip, P-I-P, then it's going to install things globally by default. So what does it mean when somebody says globally and why is that considered either good or bad? The the um, what there's there's basically the global location of where Python is installed on your machine. Nowadays, I think on a Windows machine, it's going to be like C uh, C users. Um, then you have stuff like it's in a weird, really weird spot. It's no longer on your normal spot. I think it's like app data local. I'm just guessing here, actually. Um, so maybe not there. Programs, maybe. No, the pro, yeah, programs, Python, 3.5. So it's all the way in here. So here's this lib. Um, I think this is it, actually. It might be here. Okay, this is probably it. Um, so if you go lib and then site packages, this is all the Python modules that I have installed globally. So for whatever reason, I installed Django globally. I did pill, which is a image manipulation. Uh, and then there's a few other a few others here. So look at this big ass directory where all this stuff is installed. Now, if you installed on Windows and did the default location, yours is going to be in a similar spot as well. And if you did pip install, for instance, Django, it's going to install it in this location. Now, why is that bad? That's bad because depending on which version of Django you need, if you have two projects that use Django and one's using Django 1.5 and another one's using the latest version of Django, which is like 1.10, you're only going to be able to have one globally installed Django. Uh, and, and if you start sharing modules between projects, you could have projects that clash. There's going to be things that older, like for instance, one time I had a Django 1.5 site, it was either 1.5 or 1.4, and I went to upload, uh, update it to Django 1.8, and I spent like weeks having the website down while I was spending you know, free time trying to fig fix all the shit that was broken because of the, uh, the update. So you want to avoid mixing and mashing projects. So why um, am I mentioning this? And the reason why is because virtual environment was created to solve this issue. And this was something that I really struggled when I was first getting started with Python development. I was like, ah, oh, you know, screw that. I don't want to do virtual environment. It doesn't seem like I need it. I'll just have everything installed globally. But you want to avoid that because just like we do in the Node.js and the modern web world, we want to avoid mixing and matching our modules and stuff. We want a nice clean environment. It's actually one of the reasons why, if you've ever heard about Docker, Docker is because when you go to install or move one Python project from one machine to another or to some sort of cloud environment, everything's all broken. It doesn't work. But Docker tries to create this self-contained thing, and they call it Docker because you have containers. and Everything's all self-contained, and it just works no matter where you put it. Um, so virtual environment is, is built in that same sense that when we create a virtual environment, we're going to have an isolated uh, set up. So let's go ahead and look at projects and everything I have so far is inside of my uh, Python for beginners folder. So we have first file, second file. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a uh, new a new folder inside here, which I'm going to call uh, a virtual EMV example. It's kind of a long name. Yes, I know. But uh, I just want to make sure that we do uh, have that separated. Now I can open this. You can see virtual environment. There's nothing in there. So what we want to do is first things first i want to open up the command prompt look i have a project called mother f isn't that funny um so i i want to open a command prompt to that location so let's go ahead and open up that and i will say cmd inside here in windows and that opens up the command prompt so now if i say virtual env and it's all one word and this is actually installed by default with python 3.5 and i think any python 3 for that matter we're going to say this could be whatever. This could be called your mom. It could be called your dad, your dog. It does not matter what it's called. I typically call it ENV, which is short for environment. 
I don't know why I just do that. But I always call it that. That way, when I transfer a project from one location to another, I know that my virtual environment is called EMV. The second thing I do is I say no, and that's two hyphens, no hyphen site packages. And what this means, it's all on one line, even though that's on two lines there, it's all one line, uh, you can see. Um, so even though, or so what this means is that if you don't declare that flag when you're setting up your virtual environment, if Python thinks that, that there is a, an ability to be able to share a globally installed package, it will go ahead and do so. But it's still a good idea just not to mess with it. Just say no site packages. And then when I press enter, this is going to set up our virtual environment. And it's going to put it in the folder that I was in when I executed. So obviously we were in this virtual ENV example folder, and that's where it's installing the example environment and I'll show you once this thing is done but by default it installs pip uh, which allows you to install wheel files and stuff like that which is something you'll learn about later um, but now if we look inside this virtual environment example we have this env folder and look inside here we have lib and then site packages so now instead of that long directory of where we where python was installed on our machine our packages that we install are going to go right into this site packages folder which are all going to be local so let's back up here and we need to do something with our virtual environment in order to be able to use it so if I just say dir to look at the directory you can see env is there so we're going to cd into uh, env and now if I do a dir there you can see that there's a scripts directory and we need to cd into the scripts directory and then once again I can do a dir and there's this activate so on windows I can just simply say activate. Now I want to, I want you to keep in mind on the left hand side here where it says C colon, watch what happens after we say activate and we press enter. You can now see that we have this preempted ENV which tells you that you are in the ENV virtual environment. If you name this thing your mom or your dog or whatever, it would say your mom, your dog, whatever you decided to name your virtual environment. But here it is, it's telling you, hey, your virtual environment is activated. So now, my dog is whining, now when I say pip install, it's going to install it locally to that that environment. And it's not going to put it globally. So if we said, um, I think Selenium might be a package that we want to mess with here. So let's try to pip install Selenium. I don't even know if Selenium is the right valid name for it. Uh, looks like it is actually. So this is reaching across the web and it's installed uh, Selenium. All right, so now let's go ahead and I want to open up the directory, go into EMV, go into lib, go into site packages, and uh, let's see, lo and behold, there is Selenium. You have the distribution file, which is the actual folder that got downloaded across the web, and then here is the actual install. So this is the source code for what Python Selenium is, and we'll get into that more later, but um, this is the way that you want to install and manage your project. So if you have a complicated Python project, you probably want to first things first, set up a virtual environment. Yes, it is optional. If you feel like this is too much of a headache to deal with, um, I would suggest that you try not to think that way because that's the way I thought for literally years. And it ended up biting me really bad multiple times. And now anytime I set up a Python project, whether it's a Django website or a Flask website or whatever, I always put it in a virtual environment. All right, guys, thanks for watching and please subscribe and please upvote the video. Thank you. Bye. Hey guys, so a lot of you ask me, how do I get my foot in the door to become a programmer? And I just want to take a moment to mention Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp is a 12-week intensive course that focuses on the technologies of the here and now for web development. Uh, some of the things that they're actually teaching in this 12-week course, it's geared to get you into the, the industry by focusing on things like jQuery, Node.js, React, Angular, how to use GitHub. So a lot of the things that you're going to need to do as a developer, as soon as you start, they're going to be teaching you in this in this coding boot camp. And the entire goal is to be able to get you into the industry within 12 weeks. So if you guys are interested in learning more information about Dev Mountain Coding Boot Camp, just check out the link in the description tab of this video. Thank you for watching and have a good day.